Company presents the Abbott and Costello Kid Show, transcribed in Hollywood, with our guest star Norma Jean Nelson, Cookie on the Blondie Show, and featuring the Lou Costello Jr. Youth Foundation Award. Every Saturday morning on this program, some lucky boy or girl received hundreds of dollars with a valuable gift, and the Lou Costello Jr. Youth Foundation Gold Trophy for Good Citizenship. Every boy and girl in the country is eligible for this award. We'll tell you how to win it later in the program. But first, let's have some laughs with our stars, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Costello, what were you doing down at the ocean this morning? Oh, I bought a boat from a sailor called Captain Epsom. Captain Epsom? Yes. He's an old salt. Oh. <laughs> Costello, what do you want with a boat? You know nothing about the sea. Oh, I know all about the sea, Abbott. And today I'm going to tell the kids a story about Moby Dick. Moby Dick? Yes. And I tell the story over myself and I don't need any help from you whatsoever. Why don't you go over to the Tom Brenneman's program and show him what a real old woman looks like? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Go ahead. Go, go ahead with the story. Well, okay. Now, Moby Dick was a great big whale. And he was a uh, really... A mammal. A whale is a mammal. Yes. He was a mammal. He... He was not a mammal. His name was Dick. He was a papal. <laughs> and he had seven kittles. Now, shut up and let me tell the story. All right, go ahead. Now, Moby Dick was a great big whale and he lived in the ocean and he loved to swim. When the water came in... It came up, he'd swim in. And when the water went out, he'd swim out. He swam with the tides. Yes. He... Could I have that again? <laughs> he swam with the tides. Tides. He didn't wear any tides. <laughs> he was so big, he couldn't get a pair of tides on to fit him. Now, nobody could catch Moby Dick. When anybody came after him, he'd squirt water through his nose. No, not nose. Spout. Spout. Yeah, spout. Spout. Time you kept your mouth shut. Let me finish the story. <laughs> Now, one day, Moby Dick was swimming along, and he passed a shark that was chalking up his cue. See? What kind of shark? Who said that? I did. That's in case you asked. This was a pool shark. <laughs> a pool shark. <laughs> now, Abbott, listen, will you get out of here, or I'll bank your head in the side pocket. Now, well, Moby Dick was hungry, so he grabbed a great big clam. Abalone? Yes. So he... What was that? Abalone, abalone. This is no baloney, Abbott. This is the whole truth. <laughs> Who said anything about bologna? You did. I did not. You certainly did. Then what did you say? I said abalone. Yeah, yeah, see, he said it again. No, 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 no. No, you dummy. I said the whale was eating abalone. Where would the whale get bologna in the ocean? <laughs> he was eating a great big clam. Abalone is a clam. Mm-hmm. How do you like that? They're making bologna out of clams now. <laughs> they, they don't make bologna out of clams. The kind of clam I'm talking about is abalone. A clam is abalone? That's right. How do you like that? One of us is nuts. Abbott, why don't you go blow me up and let me finish my story? Oh, you, you mean clam up. Oh, didn't you just tell me that a clam is abalone? That's right. Well, if you don't shut your clam, I'm going to hit you over the head with that baloney. <laughs> now, Moby Dick was a friendly whale, and he liked to play with the fish, especially the itty-bitty fish. Uh, guppies. Sure. He... What was that? Cuppies. Guppies. Have you never heard of cuppies? Oh, I listen to cuppies all the time. Guppies Tavern? Oh, no. <laughs> You see, now, Moby Dick was swimming along one day and he ran into a swordfish and a swordfish lunged at Moby Dick and Moby Dick lunged at the swordfish. And what happened? They had lunch together. <laughs> of course, Moby Dick paid the check. He was a very wealthy whale. He owned drugstores all over the country. Wait a minute. What drugstores does a whale own? Abbott, haven't you ever heard of whale and drugstores? <laughs> now, Moby Dick didn't feel so good, so he went to see the Dr. Fish. Dr. Fish? He was a famous sturgeon. Sorry, sorry. Yes. When he got to the sturgeon's office, there was a walrus in there having a tooth pulled. Not tooth, tusk. Yes. He... What? Tusk, tusk. Yes. Well, tusk, tusk to you, too. <laughs> and a couple of poo-poos. Now, also in the sturgeon's office was a big fish with band-aids stuck on both sides of his jaws. What was the matter with him? He was plastered to the gills. <laughs> Then a quartet of fish came in and started singing. Wait a, oh, then, wait a minute. Just a quartet of fish? Oh, sure. What a quartet. First tuna, second tuna, barracuda, and bass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Costello, this is ridiculous. What happened to Moby Dick? Oh, uh, it was a very, very sad ending. It was. One day he swam away and nobody ever saw him again. Costello, 
I'll tell you where he went. Abbott, yeah, you keep out of this. I started a story and I'm going to finish it. Now, whales are just like elephants. They have a graveyard where they go to die. No matter where a whale lives, he goes to the whale's graveyard to die. Whales swim thousands of miles from the Pacific Ocean to the Indian Ocean and from the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean against currents, over reefs, through storms, hurricanes, typhoons, and monsoons. They swim to the whale graveyard. And when they get there, they die. They die? Yes, it's the trip that kills them. Ah! <laughs> show nine-year-old Anna Mae Slaughter sings for kids everywhere look for a silver lining please don't be offended if I preach to you a while tears are out of place in eyes that were meant to smile there's a way to make your very biggest trouble smile a happy secret of it all. Look for the silver lining when there are clouds appears in the blue. Remember somewhere the sun is shining. everywhere. Her real name is Norma Jean Nelson, but you know her as the daughter of Dagwood and Blondie. And here she is, Cookie Bumstead. Thanks, kids. Hello, Johnny. I just thought I'd drop over here this morning and bring you some snow. What snow? Nothing much, but snow with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty good for so early in the morning, Cookie. Oh, sure. I just came from the dentist. If you came from the dentist, how can you feel so cheerful? He wasn't in. <laughs> I was supposed to get a couple of teeth filled. What are you going to have them filled with, gold or silver? Cement. <laughs> but cement doesn't last. Oh, no. Well, then how is it they've had the same sidewalks in this town for the last 50 years? <laughs> oh, hello, Cookie. Hello, Mr. Costello. Cookie, I heard the jokes you were telling with Johnny. I'll tell you what I'd like to do. I'll give you 50 cents if you'll go back to the Blondie show and tell them with your father. Nothing doing. Why? Well, he gave me a dollar to come over here and tell them on your show. <laughs> hey, what's going on here, Costello? Uh, Oh, hello, Cookie. Where's your father? He's probably home, rehearsing to be funny on the radio, so he sent Cookie over here to try to put try out some of his bum jokes on us. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, Mr. Costello, I'll have you know that my father is a great radio comedian, and he comes from a famous family. Why, his grandfather chased the Indians out of Pennsylvania. <laughs> what program was he on? <laughs> Now, uh, Costello, you stop picking on Cookie. She's proud of her family tree. I'll never forget the time you looked up your family tree. What happened? He got hit on the head with a coconut. <laughs> Mr. 
Costello, is your family famous for anything? Oh, sure. Why, my little nephew Bobby in Patterson, New Jersey, he has three feet. Costello, how do you know? How do you know he has three feet? Well, I got a letter from my sister yesterday. She said, Dear Lou, you should see the baby now. He's grown another foot. I... <laughs> Ah, never mind that, Costello. Cookie, I saw a dag with this morning, and he told me you were going to the dentist today. Did you go? Oh, I don't like to go to the dentist. Well, I don't blame you, Cookie. Well, I haven't been to the dentist since I was ten years old. Abbott, don't tell me you made those plates yourself. I... <laughs> Mr. Costello, do you like to go to the dentist? Oh, sure, Cookie. You see, when I was your age, I had so many wires on my front teeth, people thought I was trying to swallow a birdcage. <laughs> Did your teeth really look like a bird cage? They must have. Every night when I went to bed, the canary used to sleep in my mouth. <laughs> Cookie Costello's right. All kids should go to the dentist. Uh, what's wrong with your teeth, Cookie? Oh, I hurt them eating animal crackers. Why, they're little soft cookies. Animal crackers couldn't hurt your teeth. Well, the kind I ate were dog biscuits. Uh... <laughs> well, Cookie... When you got a toothache, there's two things you can do. Stay home and suffer, or go to the dentist's office and suffer. Do you brush your teeth, Mr. Costello? Oh, Cookie, that's the first thing my mother taught us kids to do. Yeah, and there were nine kids in Costello's family. Sure. Did they all brush their teeth? Oh, sure. It was a pretty sight in the morning. All nine of us kids used to rush to the bathroom to see who'd get first crack at the toothbrush. <laughs> Mr. Abbott's wife at the dentist office. Yes, I send my wife to the dentist every day, Cookie. Why? Because the dentist is the only man in the world that can tell Abbott's wife to shut her big mouth and get away with it. <laughs> Costello, my wife's mouth is not that big. Not big? I've seen bears crawling out of smaller holes. <laughs> I'll go to the dentist if you'll go with me. Oh, nothing doing. Last time I went there to the dentist, he put six drills and a lot of other tools in my mouth. And then at six o'clock, the whistle blew. What happened? He hung a red lantern on my nose and went home. <laughs> oh, enough of this nonsense. Uh, Cookie, wouldn't you like to sing a song for the kids? Oh, sure. Oh, good. You want uh, Costello to help you? No, I think Cookie's going to sing the song all, all right, by herself. All yes. right, go ahead. She's got a very pretty voice, and I want you to get a load of this. Okay, Cookie, here we go. Music, please. Hang on to your seats, kids. Here we go. Shoe fly pie, an apple pan dowdy makes your eyes light up. Yeah. Your tummy say howdy. Shoe fly pie, an apple pan dowdy. I never get enough of that wonderful stuff. Shoe fly pie, an apple pan out, he makes the sun come out when heavens are cloudy. Yes, Shoe fly pie, honey. an apple pan dowdy, I never get enough of that wonderful stuff. Mama, when you bake, oh mama, I don't want cake. Mama, for my sake, go to the oven. Makes a very loving shoe fly pie. An apple pan dowdy makes your eyes light up. Your tummy say howdy. The shoe fly pie. An apple pan dowdy. I never get enough of that wonderful shoe 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 shoe, shoe fly pie. Mm, good. Thank you, Cookie Bumstead. Uh, I mean, uh, Norma Jean Nelson. <laughs> ah, Norma Jean, that was really swell. And I'm sure our kid audience is happy that you came over here this morning. Well, I gotta go home now and help my daddy make a sandwich. <laughs> well, here's a little something to put between the bread. What is it? Well, for Dagwood, it's just a mouthful. It's a 20-pound Wilson ham. Bring out the ham. <laughs> there it is. That's a dandy. Oh, gee, thanks, Mr. Costello. But before I go, I'd like to say something serious. I'm glad to do my part in helping both you and Mr. Abbott in the wonderful work you are doing for the kids all over America. The Lou Costello Jr. Youth Foundation is the kind of thing there should be more of. Goodbye, kids. I'll be seeing you on the Blondie Show. <laughs> Oh, 
And now for our quiz game, Bubble or Nothing. We have eight kids on the stage, chosen from the studio audience. They're all chewing bubble gum. The kid who blows the bubble, the biggest bubble in ten seconds gets a special prize. Every kid who blows a bubble gets to be a contestant. Those who don't blow bubbles get nothing. So well, let's go with bubble or nothing. Well, the contestants are chewing their bubble gum. Now, on the count of three, the gum will ring, and they will start blowing. Are you ready, kids? One, two, three. Now, come on, blow the bubble. Blow the bubble. There they go. There they go. I see, I see, I see. Come on, come on. Blow those bubbles. Blow your bubbles. Where are the bubbles? Come on, blow them out. Oh, look at that one. Come on, come on. There's a bubble. Hold it, come on. There's two of them right there. I see it. Two of them. A boy and a girl. A boy and a girl. They both got their bubbles. Well, all right, to the two winners and the two girl, the boy and the girl that blew the biggest bubbles. Here, here you are, honey. Uh, first to the little girl over here. I want you know you blew the uh, the biggest bubble for the girl. So uh, we're going to give you you know you, you know what you win, honey. You win a beautiful wall aquarium with real live tropical fish from the Photo Aquarium Company in Inglewood, California. Now all you do is put it up on a wall and it lights up, honey. That's for you. Take it away. <laughs> now for the boy. So, uh, let's see, the boys over here. Now, you uh, also blew the biggest uh, bubble for the boys. You win this swell table model radio from the Burbank Appliance Company in Burbank, California. That's for you. Take it home and put it by your bed. Play it all along. There it is right over there, son. And now, here is contestant number one in the Bubble or Nothing contest. Little girl, what is your name? Jeannie Allison. Jeannie, how old are you? Uh, six. Ninety-seven. Seven. Seven. Well, you just aged another year. Um, where are you from, Jeannie? Where are you from? Good old California. Good old California. Good old California. Now, now, Jeannie, is there any subject you'd like to talk about at all? Anything at all? No. You, nothing at all? What about animal noises? There's a good subject. All right, how about animal noises? Yeah. You want to talk about animal noises? Now, now, answer this. What kind of an animal goes moo? Come on, now, don't be a coward. A cow. Cow, right. right. You get a prize, honey. Right over to Mr. Abbott, you get the prize here. Yeah, and a girl deserves the sweet prize. So we're giving you a whole year's supply of Peter Paul's Walnettos. And you get one month's supply now, and every month for a whole year, you'll receive another carton of Peter Paul's Walnut. And that's not all. Kids, this little girl is going to give every kid in the audience a package of Walnettos after the program. Well, here we are now for contestant number two, and I know the little boy's name is Lloyd because it's right on him. Lloyd, how old are you? Eight. Eight years old. Where are you from, Lloyd? Los Angeles, California. Good. Glad to see. You. Now, listen, uh, Lloyd, is there any particular, anything at all you'd like to talk about? Anything you're pretty smart at? Yes, arithmetic. You're smart at arithmetic? All right. If Abbott had one apple yes. and I took it away from him, how many would he have? Nothing. That's right. Oh, you win. Yes, sir. <laughs> you win, Lloyd. Right over to your right there. Oh, wow. Look at this. <laughs> Look what you've got. Three swelled bills. Believe the Kid embroidered Western shirts and two pair of Billy the Kid Western pants. There they are. Pick them up. All right, and here's contestant number three over here. Sweetheart, uh, what is your name? Cameron Larson. Good. Where are you from? Bishford, South Dakota. From South Dakota? Well, that's wonderful. We're glad to have you in this lovely climate of California right now, sweetie. Now, what would you like to talk about, honey, Kay? Anything at all? What would you like to talk about? Uh, could you tell me uh, anything about movies? You want to talk about moving pictures? Hmm? What's the last picture you saw? Did you ever see Abbott and Costello in the motion picture? You never did. Well, say, hey, you, better start, you better start to... <laughs> How old did you say you were, Kay? How old did you say you were? How old are you, honey? Five years old. Five years old. Uh, where, you're from South Dakota? She should know about horses. All right, Luke. where's North Dakota? Is that near South Dakota? Is that near South Dakota, Kay? Well, don't shake your head, honey. Just say yes or no. Yes? Yes. Thank yes, you. You correct. win. Now you can really dress up for here's a beautiful, genuine fur muff and tam set for I.J. Fox, the world's largest furriers. All right, here's the next contestant. What's your name, Sonny? Freddie. Freddie, where are you from, Freddie? Chicago. Chicago, oh, Illinois. Freddie, I'm going to ask you one question. Uh, who's buried in Grant's tomb? No. No help from the audience. No who's buried audience. in Grant's tomb? Grant. 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 That's right, you win. Right. Get six prizes in one: two pair of three tog longies, two pair of three tog, three tog uh, jodhpurs, and two pair of boxer shorts. How do you like that? There they are. Take them away with you. Well, here's our next contestant over here. I know your name is Jill, sweetheart. How old are you? Uh, six and a half. Six and a half. Good. Now, where are you from, Jill? New York. New York City. Good. It's, that's fun. You know, it's very, very cold in New York right now, yeah. Jill. Now, Jill, would you like to talk about fairy tales? 
Yeah. All right. One day, Little Red Riding Hood went for a walk in the woods. Who was she going to see? Her grandmother. Oh, That's right. right. Now, when she got to her grandmother's house, who did she see? The wolf. Right. Whoa. You win. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, Mr. Rabbit, Jill, Mr. Rabbit's going to give you a very lovely prize, but I got something here for you. Have you got your mother with you today? Yeah. You really have? Yeah. Well, listen. If your mother's really here, here's a present for her. I want you to give her six gorgeous pairs of Canon 51-gauge nylon stockings made by the makers of the famous Canon towels and sheets. That's a present from you to your mom. Now, Mr. Rabbit... Mr. Rabbit has a present for you over on your right. Go over and get Mr. Rabbit's present. Beautiful quilted house coat from Eastern Columbia Broadway at nine. Now, wait a minute. And you also win this famous Hollywood star stamp album, autographed by Lou and myself personally, and a set of movie star stamps to start your collection. And each kid in the audience... Gets a set of movie star stands. How's that? You like it, honey? <laughs> okay, son, you're the next contestant. Now, how old are you? Six and a half. Six and a half, too. How, uh, where, what's your name? John Kimberly. John, where are you from? Where are you from, John? Uh, uh, Los Angeles? Take right up, John. Uh, Don't be afraid. Where, where from? Chicago? Where? Does he know where you're from? Detroit. Oh, Detroit. Detroit. Well, that's good. Now, uh, would you like to talk about rivers? What state was named after the Ohio River? Cleveland. Not Cleveland. No, not Cleveland. What state was named after the Ohio River? Oh, 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 Ohio, 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 and to feed it, we will send you a six-month supply of Wilson's Ideal Dog Food. The seven-course meal ideal for your dog. How do you like it, Jess? <laughs> What's your name, dear? June Scarborough. June Scarborough. June, where are you from? Jacksonville, Florida. Would you like to talk about arithmetic? Hmm? Okay. All right. If I had ten bananas and ate seven of them and threw the peelings on the sidewalk, how many people would slip on the banana peels? <laughs> uh-huh. That's slower. All right. If I had ten bananas and ate seven of them and threw the peelings on the sidewalk, how many people would slip the, on the banana peels? Seven. Uh, the answer is five. Is that right? I think you're right. Go ahead. I'm going to give it to you. You're right. Seven is right. <laughs> Wait a minute. You also get a whole year's supply of delicious Peter Paul's Walnettos. Boy, you're going to be popular now. That's all for you, honey. A whole year's supply. Wilton Clark. Wilton Clark. Uh, where are you from, Wilton? East Los Angeles. East Los Angeles. Good. We're going to talk about birds. Now, I've been getting them for years, but we're going to talk about them. Which is the biggest, a robin, a sparrow, a crow, or a hummingbird? You don't have to crow about it, either. Crow. Crow, right, you're right. right. You're right. You, 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 talk crow. you get the Swell Lake Placid ski suit with a plaid wool zipper jacket and, and warm wool trousers made by Sandest. Well, kids, how did you like? Bubble or nothing? <laughs> present the Lou Costello Jr. Youth Foundation Award. The award this week goes to eight-year-old William Robinson Jr. of Cranston, Rhode Island. And folks, the foundation received more mail on this boy than any other winner of the award to date. Over 300 letters and newspaper clippings were sent in calling our attention to William Robinson Jr. Well, Lou, I think that should be proof enough that the kid is entitled to the award. I saw his picture in one of the newspapers sent in. He seems such a little guy to have done anything big. Johnny, them little guys are sometimes a lot bigger than they look from the outside. And that's the kind of a guy William Robinson is. Kids, he's just eight years old, motherless, and lives alone with his dad in Cranston, Rhode Island. And, uh, well, Lou, you tell the kid the story about it. Well, kids, I guess you all read in the papers about the big snowstorms back in the east. Well, on December 26th, the day after Christmas, Rhode Island was in the grip of a terrific snowstorm. Out in Cranston, Rhode Island, the drifts were five and six feet deep. On the morning of this big storm, in a little house on the edge of the town, a man was suffering from a severe heart attack. William. 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 Here I am, Dad. Dad. Dad, what's the matter? William, it's my heart. This time it's worse than ever. I, I'll run for the doctor, Dad. I'll get him here right away. I'll put on my clothes and be back with the doctor. Oh, no, you can't go out of the house. The snow is too deep. 
little boy like you couldn't possibly get to town. But, Dad... I'll be all right. You stay here. Dad, I'm going for the doctor. I'll make it. Now, it's nearly a mile to town, William. You can't get through. Don't try it, William. You're too little. I gotta go, Dad. You need a doctor. I'll make it. William. William, come back. You can't get through that snow. William. Did he get through, Mr. Costello? Did he make it? Johnny, little William Robinson battled those snow drifts for three quarters of a mile. He made the edge of the town. The doctor's house was nearly a mile further on. William was exhausted. He was covered with snow from head to foot. He dragged himself to the nearest house. William Robinson, what are you doing out in a day like this? Look at you, you're soaked to the skin. I'll tell your father about this. Mr. Kirby, Mr. Kirby, my dad, my dad's got a bad heart attack. Please, please call the doctor. Holy mackerel, the kid fainted. Ma, quick, phone the doctor and tell him to get out to Robinson's place right away. And then come here and help me get this kid straightened out. He's in a bad way. Well, they ought to have a phone in that house living way out there. Gee, Mr. Costello, I'll bet that kid got sick all right. I get the sniffles just from getting my feet wet. Yes, Johnny. William was laid up for a long time, recovering from that hike through snowdrifts. But he got the doctor there in time to save his dad's life. Yes, Lou. And his kids like William Robinson. And there's millions of them in this country that make me proud that we started this kid show. It's a real thrill to be able to bring these boys and girls to the attention of the whole country. That goes for me too, bud. And now, Johnny, what have you got to say about it? Well, Mr. Costello, there's no doubt about it. William is sure a winner. What do you kids think? Well, that does it, Johnny. Our jury is convinced. Go ahead and make the award. To William Robinson, Jr. goes this week's Lou Costello, Jr. Youth Foundation Award. And here are your prizes. First, a beautiful Gruen wristwatch. This is a solid gold, 17-jewel Gruen, engraved from Bud and Lou. And a gold Eversharp pen and pencil set. And a Packard Bell three-way portable radio, made by the makers of the famous Packard Bell Phonacord. And a bicycle that will make you the head man on your block. It's a Schwinn Deluxe built bicycle, the world's finest. And here for you are footballs, basketballs, softballs, and tennis balls, made by the Pennsylvania Rubber Company, makers of the world's finest sporting equipment. And to you, William Robinson, Jr., goes the Lou Costello, Jr. Youth Foundation Gold Trophy for Good Citizenship. This is a beautiful engraved gold trophy made by the Dodge Incorporated, largest manufacturer of trophies in the world. Uh, Lou, uh, how about William's dad? William, we've got a gift for you to give to that dad that you love so much. It's a beautiful, grown, precision wristwatch engraved from you to your dad. And we hope he gets well real quick. The New Costello Junior Youth Foundation Award is given each week to boy or girl for a civic good deed. You, the listeners, will nominate this boy or girl of the week. Anyone can write a letter nominating a boy or girl. Just write to Abbott and Costello, Hollywood, California. Simply tell the story of an outstanding good deed or actual heroism by a boy or girl 16 years of age or younger. All letters become the property of the Lou Costello Jr. Youth Foundation. They will be judged by its board of directors, and the judge's decisions will be final. The award will be made each Saturday morning on the Abbott and Costello Kid Show. Be sure to listen. The winner may be your kid or the kid next door. Well, boys and girls, that's all for today. And kids, be sure and listen in next Saturday when we have two guests, really two guest stars, that great cowboy star, Tim Holt, and his dad, Jack Holt. Well, so long, kids. Till next Saturday. This is the next week's award winner. And remember, you can nominate a winner by writing a letter to Abbott and Costello, Hollywood, California. And don't miss the regular Abbott and Costello show on Wednesday night. William Robinson, Jr., as father and Mr. Kirby, were portrayed by Henry Blair and Barney Phillips.